6 o'clock uh, posted time to start and before we do the Pledge of Allegiance and call the meeting to order uh, we have presentation to acknowledge and uh, I have uh, a little presentation I'm going to do to uh, show some stuff that's been in the works and what's going on in the county and then we'll get back to the uh, Thing. And I'd like to ask Melissa Russ to come up to the side podium there. Melissa is head of our HR department and she has received a professional achievement award and this is given by the local government personnel association and she's picked as the winner of the award for the state of georgia and uh, it's in recognition of outstanding contributions to the human resource profession uh, demonstrates leadership organization impact and a commitment to her profession. And we're real proud. This is uh, one out of 159 counties in Walton County's HR got the top award. And Melissa, this happened in November. <laughs> you got sick, some of us got sick, but we're recognizing it now. And congratulations, job well Thank done. No, I would just like to say thank you so much for the chairman, county manager, and the board of commissioners to allow me to serve. Um, it is my pleasure, and um, all of the employees, department heads, um, it's truly um, an honor to serve as your HR director. This is a real quick presentation that uh, I gave in December to the Walton County Chamber of Commerce and all of its leaders to kind of give an idea of you commissioners. I think one of you made that event, so I would like for you to see what we've been working on and what we have in the works uh, since I've come on board. So we'll start with next slide, please. We're, of course, renovating this building. You can still see the plywood. Windows are back ordered. Uh, and we are working, next slide, on our infrastructure here in the county. We're upgrading water lines. Uh, we're about to start a water treatment plant at Hard Labor Creek. And we're still working on the public safety complex. This is... Uh, little house across the street that we bought is Carter Watkins office. That's where Melissa's at now, human resources. That gave the uh, DA additional office space at Hammond Drive by moving them out and moving them into this. Next slide. The little building across the street, Courthouse Annex 1, you remember the little red brick building that uh, I was going to tear down till we found out that the fiber comes into that building and goes to all the other county buildings. And to move the fiber is $2.3 million. So we spent $720,000 and remodeled this building, and we've got a brand new building for our planning and zoning. We'll be moving into it. Next slide, please. Okay, public safety complex. We have a little video 
coming up. This will be on Hammond Drive. That's an elevation on the left. The drawing on the right hand corner, the black top building is the defax building and Hammond Drive Courthouse is of course not in view there, but uh, next. This is how it will look. I wanted the public to see how it would look from a drive up standpoint. This will be coming in off of Baker Street down to the complex. Notice the elevation. We took great pain into having the elevation lower where it's not seen from Baker Street. There were a lot of comments about uh, how ugly this was going to be if it was seen from Baker Street. I think it looks pretty good. And we should break ground on that sometime this year. Okay, next slide. Of course, we finished up the South Walton Community Center. It's a very nice complex. If any of you have a chance to go down to it, uh, we have weight rooms, we have uh, gymnasium, walking trails inside, and we'll be finishing up the outside walking trails when the weather permits. Next slide. This is the Good Hope Fire Station. This is how it's going to look. We've actually broke ground on it today. We have official groundbreaking the 25th. Um, that will replace the building that burned down. Yes, we had a fire station burned down last year. Next slide. Okay, at Walnut Grove, we're going to build a park and it's going to be built in two phases. This first phase will have an amphitheater, which is this conceptual drawing of how it will look with the corporate pavilion that you see there in the foreground. Next slide. This is how the amphitheater will look. This is for shows and for functions. Next slide. This is a closer look at the stage area of the amphitheater. Next slide. This is corporate pavilion, which have full commercial kitchen that can, uh, some corporation wants to sponsor an event, they can have a place for their uh, clientele. Next slide. It'll have a community center like we have at Felker and at uh, Meridian and now South Walton. And in addition to community center, next slide, we're going to have a splash park. The splash park at Between has been very popular. A uh, matter of fact, it gets overcrowded. So we're going to do another one twice as big as what we have at Between at this park. And uh, this is Youth Restroom Pavilion. Next slide. The big draw will be the five field softball. Five field complex, softball complex. Uh, this will have artificial turf, so it be, can be used at any time uh, with the concessions and batting cages. Next slide. Uh, this, our parks areas are really getting huge demand, so we're going to look at moving forward with this. Next slide. Hard Labor Creek. I don't know if all of you know where Hard Labor Creek is. It's in the southeast part of the county. It was built for a water resource for Walton County. We were able to obtain and secure a $42 million grant uh, from the state and federal government for a water treatment plant. And we have since borrowed the balance that it will take to build that. And we have a little quick a video of that too, please. We think we have a video of it. One, maybe one more click. No, there it goes. This runs at a little slower speed so I can keep up with it. But Hard Labor Creek is a 1400 acre 
impound facility for drinking water. It's located, if you see uh, Covington, South Circle, Monroe, and Atlanta, where the blue is is where Hard Labor Creek is. We'll zero in on it. It has the capability of producing 42 million gallons of fresh drinking water per day. The facility that we're going to start and build will be 16 million gallons per day. It will be located in the highlighted area there. The water intake is already in the reservoir. The bids are in the process of being um, submitted right now. And it is finally going to be a reality. Um, and it will zoom in and show you how the plant will look. This is the water intake that's presently there. So this was planned 20 something years ago and it's finally coming full circle. And even though we're running at a little slower speed, bear with us, <clears throat> shows the 16 million gallon a day facility that we're going to build right now. And Walton County is using 7 million gallons right now. Um, and all the different items that will go into this facility. This facility will be, facility itself will be 139 million. And then the transition line's another 42 million that ties into all the systems. The plant will set up the hill, and that's how it will be located where the water tanks you see there. It'll be on both sides of the road. The uh, sediment ponds will be here on this side, on the south side, and on the north side of the road will be the plant, and it'll show you how it will look. This will handle Walton County for at least the next two to 300 years water supply. Um, and uh, right now Walton County buys every drop of water it sells from the Cornish Creek Reservoir. And uh, Newton County is in dire need of us giving up our allotment in Cornish Creek. So that'll be coming full circle in the next four years. And I think that's just about to, uh, that's incorrect. The build out is 62 million, not 64. Uh, I verified that with a couple of our engineers but that's such a large amount, and we're such a long way from utilizing that much water. I just wanted the board and the public to get a grasp of what we've been working on. They're huge projects. These projects will take four and five years to get complete. And uh, coming from the private sector, I still can't get over how long government projects take. Uh, in the private sector, we we would build it in two years, but uh, there's a lot of red tape and permits, and uh, uh, I call it rigmarole that you have to go through to get this accomplished. So, and I think that concludes this. And I just wanted to do that real quick before we started our meeting, so y'all see what was going on. Okay, uh, I would like to, since I'm standing up, let's all stand up and say the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And please stay standing for the invocation, I'm sorry. Father, please give us the wisdom tonight 
to make the right decisions for the county and please watch over us and guide us and help us to do the best we can do for Walton County. Please be with everyone here tonight and watch over them as we all prepare to leave. Keep us all safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'll call the meeting to order. And under the roll call, it appears that we have 100% attendance except for the county manager. He's en route back from California. Uh, adoption of the agenda. Is there any additions or deletions that uh, need to be added to the agenda? If not, I would like to make one addition under discussions. Item 13, discuss security cameras at Felker Park here in Monroe. And I'll bring that up at that time if there's no objections. With that change, I entertain a motion to accept the agenda. So moved. I have a motion to accept. Second. I have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimous. Okay, Planning Commission recommendations. Okay, this first case is the Planning Commission recommended denial of land use uh, case LU2209002, a character area change from suburban to neighborhood, and a rezone Z2208-0019 to rezone 3.65 acres from A1 to B2 for self-storage, climate control facility, and variances. The applicant is Monroe Self Storage, LLC. The owner is Judy D. Cook. Property is located at 5005 Ozora Church Road. Um, it actually does not touch um, 81. And this is in District 1. Um, at the October meeting, uh, Attorney Andrea Gray represented this. They, as I said, would like to build a self-storage climate control facility with a variance to allow a two-story facility and to reduce the buffer from 50 foot to 25 with the addition of a six foot opaque fence. Um, there were some people that spoke in opposition. Their concerns included this being a nuisance, uh, increase in traffic, and close proximity to an existing storage warehouse on Highway 81. That was at um, the October meeting and then it was postponed in November. And then in December, the Planning Commission recommended denial of the case based on the current land use, the fact that the variances are needed, and the proposed use is not compatible in use or scale. Rename those conditions one more time. Yes, sir. Um, denial of the case based on the current land use, the fact that variances are needed, and that the proposed use is not compatible in use or scale. Okay. And was it tabled or postponed? So at the, the October 6th is the only public hearing that was held. October 6th. October 6th. The November meeting was postponed. The applicant had a um, conflict in the date. At the December meeting, the Planning Commission called the meeting and said that they had heard all the public comment and they in October in October were any public comments made in December there were some that would like to have been made but they were not the um, Planning Commission told them that the public hearing had already been heard and they were making a decision I got a little problem with that but uh, okay all right we're gonna open public hearing this we're starting from scratch on this one we're open public hearing We'll hear those opposed, we'll hear those for, and uh, give everyone all the time they need to express their concerns either way on this one. Um, so we'll start by opening the public hearing and ask the applicant to come forward and explain to the board what they're wanting to do, please.
Well, good evening, everyone. Happy New Year. Go dogs. Um, pleasure to be before you uh, here tonight. Um, I'm Andrea Gray, as you know, and I represent um, Monroe Self Storage and their request to rezone uh, from A1 to B2 to accommodate a, <coughs> sorry, a climate controlled self storage facility on Ozor Church Road. Well. <clears throat> Um, as Ms. Sherna mentioned, the, the property um, is located here. Um, it's 3.65 acres. Um, it does actually have a corner. Just the corner of it at the bottom there does touch Highway 81. Um, it's directly across the street from a gas station and a Dollar General, which, as you know, is a uh, commercial use. The proposal is to do a, a high-quality <coughs> climate-controlled self-storage facility with a brick facade, um, outside gated entry. Um, we said opaque fence, and um, since working back and forth with the adjacent property owners, we've agreed to do an eight-foot wood fence uh, with barbed wire um, across the top. So we've um, increased the standard there as well. Um, Self-storage facilities generate significantly less traffic than almost any commercial use I can think of. Um, the estimate is about 10 cars per day. Um, which is significantly less than another gas station, any kind of restaurant or strip mall or other commercial uses um, that we could be asking for. So this is a, a low impact use. And there is you know, other storage facilities in the area, but there's a high demand uh, for this type of business. Um, and it's a high demand not from people out of state or out of county, but from people in the local area that need additional space for their things. Um, here's a depiction of the site plan. Um, it's approximately a 62,000 square foot um, facility. Um, it is proposed at um, two stories. And you can see here just to the south, um, there is a planned roundabout. Um, GDOT has that in the works. Uh, we've been in close coordination with GDOT on this as well. Again, because the property does, in fact, at the corner, um, touch Highway 81. And the GDOT roundabout requires um, the acquisition of about a little less than half an acre um, by GDOT to make their project work. Um, in coordination with GDOT, they recommended the location of the driveway there, uh, which is on Azor Church Road. And that is adjacent to the existing drive um, of the other commercial business in this area, uh, which is the gas station. Um, also on this plan, you'll see the, the 25 foot um, transitional buffer. Um, and you know, again, we've agreed to put the, an eight foot wood fence there to help buffer that from the adjacent property owners. Um, and you'll also see um, a small detention pond in the front there. Um, and parking in the front. Um, but again, a, a nice quality facility, uh, brick, you know, high quality that would match um, the Dollar General. It is two stories, um, but that would only put it about five feet higher than the Dollar General because of how the land slopes. Um, a lot of that facility will be kind of a basement type um, structure there, so it will not be particularly obtrusive um, in the area. So again, as I mentioned, we have coordinated with um, GDOT. I sent you all a letter um, last week containing the email and the letter that we got from GDOT. Could I stop you right there? Was the Planning Commission aware of this letter from GDOT, or was it presented to them? It was not presented to them. Uh, we had a presentation that I had ready to go at the December meeting. I sent it to Patrice, and she loaded it on the computer. Uh, but again, they declined to hear from the applicant or from okay. um, anyone else. Um, so they did not see that. But, um, but I have sent that to you. And, um, and again, we've co coordinated very closely with them, and they've indicated that that entrance on Azor Church Road is the safest place um, to put it and that they would agree for us to um, basically have a curb cut through their right of way for that. Uh, we've also had discussions and emails back and forth with the um, adjoining property owners. Um, I think in some cases you have to agree to disagree, um, but we have agreed to add um, additional protections for them by way of the eight foot wooden fence and uh, barbed wire on the top. And then of course, um, downward facing lighting. And as, a, as in all, um, facilities that my client does. There's significant security cameras and lighting to make sure that it is a safe and secure uh, facility. This property, my client's property, Ms. Cook's property, and you'll hear from her in, in just a moment, is not suitable for residential use anymore. 
You can see here pictures. These are pictures of Miss Cook standing on her property and looking out the front over Azore Church Road. And you can see that she's looking directly at a, a commercial use. Um, because of the location, because of the development of this gas station and of the Dollar General um, and the, the implications of that, she has not been able to sell her property as a residential property. In listing her property for sale, she's been approached by many commercial uses. She's been approached by people that want to build another gas station um, and, and other types of uses, strip malls and those types of things. And so, you know, at this time, she's not able to sell it to be a residential property, again, because of the location. And here you can see the view at night. Again, the lights are fairly bright. This is just sitting from her, you know, the front of her property. Um, and again, I mean, you know, commercial lighting, traffic, um, all the things generated by the, the Dollar General and by the gas station. And these are challenges that are unique to Ms. Cook. None of the other property owners in this area, on this road, in adjoining neighborhoods are facing this gas station. And that's better shown here on this map. And so um, one of the things that the Planning Commission said, as, as Ms. Sharna said, was um, they said that the property or proposed use didn't fit within the character of the area. And so here I pulled a map from your uh, future land use plan that shows in pink the suburban character area. Now what's interesting about this map is that it shows the Dollar General and the gas station also in the suburban character area, um, which there are non-conforming uses there. Um, they do not fit within that land use category either. And so I think it's misleading to say that our property being rezoned commercial for this self-storage facility would somehow be out of place when directly across the street is a gas station and a Dollar General. And so I urge you to look at the actual uses occurring versus the pink shown on a map because it's not indicative of what is actually going on and the impacts that my client is actually facing. Uh, Planning Commission also mentioned um, concerns about having the driveway off of Azora Church Road versus Highway 81. Um, in this case, again, I, I've provided you with the correspondence from GDOT and, and giving their recommendation that it be on Azor Church Road. Um, but the Planning Commission mentioned that there were other circumstances or other projects down 81 uh, where they had required the entrance be on 81. And I'd like to say that this project is significantly different than those. First, there's already a commercial use on Azor Church Road. This is not a, 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 an island. Um, I think you'll recall on, on the Watson Mill project, um, which I worked on and, and presented before you many years ago. Um, the secondary entrance for that project actually led into a neighborhood, and there were no other commercial uses in the area. Versus here, where the secondary road already has a commercial entrance, and there's a commercial development directly across the street. Um, also, in this instance, there's a roundabout project proposed, which is not um, not, not on any of the other projects um, that you've um, approved or not approved, um, but this is a very unique circumstance um, that I think you should consider these specific factors when making your determination on uh, the location of the driveway. So our request to you um, is to approve this very low intense use uh, for the self-storage climate controlled uh, facility. Um, we think that it is a fair balance between the property rights of our client and of the adjoining property owners. Um, again, we're not asking for a restaurant or a strip mall or anything that generates a lot of traffic. We're looking at something that generates about 10 trips per day. Um, you know, and, and most importantly, you know, my client is not able to sell this as residential property because people don't want to live across the street from the bright lights at the gas station. But if you allow this commercial use, it'll be commercial use facing commercial use. So my client's use of this property as a self-storage facility will not directly impact a resident across the street. It's just facing um, the gas station as well. So with that request, specifically what we're asking for is to rezone the property from A1 to B2, to allow a variance to make it two stories, and to allow for a 25-foot buffer with the condition of an eight-foot wood fence with the barbed wire on the top, um, and to the, amend the character area to be um, neighborhood residential to accommodate our use. Um, with that, I'd like to ask Ms. Cook to come up and speak for just a moment. And after you hear from her, I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Ms. Cook.
Hello. You can pull the mic down. Thank you. Hi. Um, I don't really know what else to say. I've tried to talk at every one of the meetings and get y'all to try to understand um, what it's like living there. And I've been there for almost 30 years, or right around that. And, um, and it's, it's been wonderful. I loved it. But when they built the filling station, which we fought that, and then the um, Dollar Tree kind of just snuck in there. I didn't even know anything about that. And, um, but it's, it's just like, like she said, it's, it's just not even a desirable place. It's so hard for me to get in and out, and I go way up the road and turn left down Watson Fane and all this kind of stuff. And tonight I was just sitting there looking at it. And But I love my home. Don't get me wrong. I love when I moved there. And my neighbors have all been good to me, and uh, I like to think that I've been good to them. But it comes a time when you have to face things when you get older, and uh, I'd like to be closer to my son, Tommy, and them, and maybe look toward New Hope. And, um, you know, I pay my property taxes too, and this has happened to me. And, and we were told when um, they put the gas station there, and uh, I think it was Brown's Oil Company put that there, and uh, said that we would never have a problem if it, the area went commercial. That, it could never be turned down, but I never got that in writing. So um, anyway, that's really all I need to, I guess, say to, unless y'all have any questions for me, I'd be glad to answer them. All right, thank you, Ms. Cook. Are there any questions from the board? That, uh, how long has the gas station been there? Ms. Gosh, you know, I, I, I don't know, it's been there a while. Um, I don't know. I, have, I really don't know. It's okay. probably about at least 13 years, I think. It, it, I had horses and stuff there. Looks to be a little older style, so it's yeah. It may style. be. It may. Yeah. It's. It may be a little older than that. I don't know. I've. Um, but I like I said, it's just not desirable. Uh, I sit on my porch and I still love my porch and rock my chair. But it's nothing to look at. All you hear is noise and boom, boom, this, and cars in and out of the gas station. You don't know if, if what's going on around there anymore. It's not the same. And, and everyone that calls is, you know, all the people that used to call before everything got so busy around there were just regular folks calling for a home or whatever. And... Um, <laughs> And then the next thing I knew, everything, everybody's calling and wants to, it to go commercial and wants to put something there. And I've had nursing homes, main thing is filling station, uh, I guess because of the competition or whatever, you know. But um, I think there is need for um, storage facilities because all these apartments that's going up everywhere and where do they put their stuff, you know. So, but uh, that's about it. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, is I got one question. All right. We have a question, Miss Cook. Do, no, 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 not for her. Oh yeah, we we're going to have uh, Andrea back to answer yes, questions, sir. and I've got a few myself, uh, and then we'll hear the opposition. Uh, do but, you know? Do you know when they're going to build the? Roundabout, or if, when do they got it scheduled? I think we do, but I don't. 12 months from now. Yeah, it's not far away. Uh, Morris and them are already been ordered to relocate water lines. So. All right. Any any other questions from the board? Oh. Uh, this facility, how will it be managed? Uh, will it be have an office, and will it have restrooms and 
you know, an office area? Is that a question that could be answered? Um, yeah, yeah, Nathan, if you wouldn't mind answering, Nathan will be the owner of the facility, Nathan Purvis. Would you please come? I can't, I'm an old man, I can't hear as good. Uh, good evening, uh, Nathan Purvis. Thanks for your time. Uh, to answer your question, we have another facility south of town at Claw Brewer in 81, and that one will have a full-time employee that will go back and forth. This one will not have uh, restrooms. The code doesn't require it when the average visit, I think, is less than two hours per visitor. So, And it's also limited to a septic tank, which kind of, if we were to put a septic tank drain filled in, it would shrink the size. I knew it was. I knew there was no sewer in that area. Yeah. Uh, so no, it's going to be run by an employee that goes back and forth, and a kiosk, and security cameras, and an app on your phone. So technology is really. So changing. it will be card technology access. Okay. All right. Oh, wait a minute, Nathan. <laughs> Come back. You're going to have to tell your business. All right. Uh, 62,350 square feet. What will this facility cost? Well, you know, things are changing every day, but probably... Uh, Completely heat and cool, correct? Probably four to five million uh, construction. I come up with 5.3 at $85 a foot. Okay. Thank you. I got a question. So this is going to be completely no outside storage whatsoever, and all access points to the storage will be from the inside, will be from a door? Yeah, that's, that's the way I did the last one at Claw Brewer. That's the way I like to do them. I want them to look good. I mean, it literally is going to look like an office building. You won't see a boat. You won't see an old ragged RV. You won't see anything. You're going to drive by and think it's an office building. Okay. And how many units will be in this building? You got any idea? Probably 400. Various sizes? Or so this will be all inside storage. Everything all inside. Storage. Everything inside. It's, it's going to be built on a basement. You're going to pull up the lower level. You can enter that way, or you can drive around the back to the top side and enter the second level. Um, so a lot of the traffic you won't even see. They'll be coming in from the back side if they're entering level two. Level one will be will look just like Donald, you know, Dollar General. Um, I think it's in your code already too that the reduction in the transitional buffer, as long as you do the fence. That's already kind of granted, so that's not even... Well, it's granted for uh, paving pedestrians. Oh, okay. Okay, okay. and I... Okay. Kirkland, you got any other questions? Oh, that took care of it. Thank you. I got a question about the fence. Did you say with bob wire on top of it? I mean, we don't have to do that. I would think that on an eight-foot fence, that would make it look awful. I mean, we've never had anybody break in our units. There, there's cameras everywhere. Um, I think that... As technology improves, you see less and less issues in, in storage facilities. We can literally sit at our, lay in our bed at home and look at 14 cameras. If something moves, we, we see it and we get a buzz. Okay. Any further questions from the board? <clears throat> okay. Thank you all. Is there anyone else here in favor of this request that would like to come up and make a comment? Okay, seeing none, is there anyone here in opposition to this? Please come forward. Please come forward and uh, state your name and tell us why you're opposed to this request. Uh, one at a time, please. And uh, if, if you're same issue over and over we don't need to hear but the particular issues we do need to hear because i want to hear everybody's position okay i'm alan harrison and i live on the south side of 81 highway and i had a lot to say before at the other meeting but i didn't uh bring me no notes this time because i didn't really think i'd have to redo all that but i and I'm one of the ones that wanted to speak at the last meeting, the December meeting. And didn't get to speak? No. Uh, Did they allow anyone to speak at no, that meeting? Uh -uh. And it uh -huh. kind of made me feel like a dummy. Because well, I, I, 
We're going to have to address that. All if, that happens. if something's tabled, they need to do a new public hearing for both sides. I mean, I'm trying to look at both sides here. Okay. And well, all of it happened so quick. I thought they had passed it. I didn't realize they had turned it down. It. Yeah. That's, but anyway, I, since then, I, I wanted to, this is what I wanted to enter at the last meeting. The When they paved all that Dollar General lot and that store lot, that's thousands of square feet of pavement over there now that used to be dirt and the water would soak in, but now it doesn't. And it's all of it runs right down there to that little spring that starts just north of 81 down there on my property line. And I've got several pictures of here showing how bad the erosion is from this, that. And uh, I got a pond behind my house that was 13 feet deep when it was built, when it was put there. Yes, sir. And there's two subdivisions that have been in, okayed and built. The water from that, I guess it didn't make the catch ponds adequate, but that lake is, was 13 feet deep when it was built. And I've had it, I made the people that built the subdivision come dig it out with the big track hole up on the upper end, about probably big as this from here to the door over there. And and now it's still, it's back full again. The ab, it's all the upper end of it is this deep, got trees growing on it from where it's washed so bad coming in there. From the subdivision? Yes. I know How long ago were the subdivisions put in? Oh, 25, 30 years ago, I guess. They didn't have retention ponds then. Well, they got was, one. It's there. They got one. A little okay. bitty one. And it's all washed down there in my lake. But anyway, these pictures are of that branch that's on the uh, lower end of my property. You're welcome to start them there and pass them down, please. And that's what's happened since that parking lot was put in over there. So you live south of the Dollar General, yeah, back toward Loganville? South side of 81, right Okay. Ahead. Yeah, and I see all that stuff that they had to You be. see the same stuff she sees? Every day. Every day. Every day. Okay. Now being since they built it, which is well. Right, we're going to look at your pictures, and you can pick them up once they make it okay. to the other okay. end. Is there... Now, the subdivision and, you're referring to, is that the Watts, off the Watson Mill? Is that the subdivision you're talking about? The subdivision that's feeding into your... It's Eagles Landing and Mystic. Mystic. What? Mystic Woods. Mystic Woods and Eagle Landing. They come on yeah. the Ozora, or? No, they come on 81. They up on 81. Up on the north side of oh, okay. Arden. The e uh, I guess it's the east side of my house. Yes, and and another thing, I have the original plat to that property, and it plainly states on that plat that Judy's property met at a dirt road that ran into 81. It was an old couldn't even go through it when I moved down there. Or Zora Church. Right. You could not drive through it. It wouldn't, it, it wouldn't be oh, possible. Excuse me. And that plat that I own, that I have in my, I didn't bring it with me, but I have a plat that plainly states that that property line was at the center of that dirt road. Yeah, a lot of the old roads, the property lines went to the center line. And then? They were later corrected as people sold and resold well, and, and so it, forth. So that made the property line change? It did. Uh, the acreage changed on okay. all those parcels over the years. Uh, it was very common. Okay, well, it This changed. courthouse, the property that the county owned goes to the center line of Court Street because it's the old deed and hadn't changed hands and we own half of Court Street right next door. Uh, but the city claims it as a city street. Okay, well. 
but it, it all that being said, a lot of them been corrected as time as land changed hands and stuff. They never could have paved Ozor Church Road whenever it was first paved until they had the proper right of way. They pulled that line. They pulled that road up the hill. That was because of the DOT, but in the county, but the county agreed to do that. And, and that moved her property. That took part of her property right there. And she got paid for it, I'm sure, because my father didn't get a dime out of it. He owned the property, but he didn't get paid for it. And well, we, this board has nothing to do with DOT and, uh, you know. Uh, it's pr past property lines is what I'm talking about. I understand. Uh, and uh, all we do is record plats, the county does and stuff, but we, we don't guarantee surveys or survey lines or anything of that nature. Uh, I understand what you're talking about, the old deeds, and uh, there's, there's abandoned roads that the county's abandoned. Uh, there's newly acquired roads that we acquire. Um, but your main complaint, if I get it right, is the runoff. Right, the from, erosion. Okay. All right. Any further questions? Just a, a couple questions, Mr. Chairman. So, Mr. Harrison, your property, your your property is going to be adjacent to the new roundabout, correct? Is that essentially your driveway where the new roundabout's going in? Yes. How much How much property do you have there? Well, they hadn't said how much they're going to take. No, no. How much do you How much do you have there? Thirty. Thirty-eight acres. The challenge that we're going to see with that intersection is as soon as they build that roundabout, it's essentially going to be a commercial intersection. Um, over time, it may not happen immediately or, or overnight. Do you, what are your specific objections to the storage facility itself? Well, just the runoff. Somebody going to be there all the time. They can come in 24 hours a day, seven days a week, they say. And it's going to cause that much more runoff. Would you support any other type of commercial development on that site? Anything that they pave the yard, if they pave it, it's going to wash. It's going to do disaster. It's be disastrous to our, to my property line. Down there. This is this was. I don't know if y'all could tell, and I would love for you to come and look at it. Let me go show you where it's. <clears throat> making such a mess Which be glad to take you down there and show you I, i've i've looked at a lot of flood uh these days with the development and these heavy rains that we have which ones which one's your property all that is all this yeah all that but not that that's Mr. Hong Tai Lai. So your house is here? Mm hmm. Okay. So the one highlighted in red and then. Behind. This is mine too. All this is mine. I'm nervous as a long tail cat in a room full of rocking chair. 35 acres behind the house. Mm hmm. And is that the lake right there? Yes, sir. There's a picture of it. Well, the subdivision flows down towards your lake, but the convenience store and Dollar General does not. Correct. It goes to the... It goes back down. It goes to that little spring. I rode out there today and looked at everything, the contour and uh, the whole site. But yeah, the subdivision to the right was responsible for whatever silt went in your lake. Okay. Any further questions? Okay, the next one opposed, please come forward. If you have some new items to bring up for the board. My name is Marie Harrison, 
And I guess the first thing I'm going to say is we got to disagree on this thing to agree to disagree because my house is just directly across from that gas station right now. Um, uh, it's it's going to be right next adjacent to that. Okay. To this project they're wanting to do. And also, I would like to mention that the Dollar General and the gas station were exceptions to the zoning rules. That wasn't the way the county had <coughs> mapped it out to be at that point. They had to get it rezoned, both parts. So anyway, I know it's Miss Cook's right to sell her property to whomever she pleases, since she's tired of living here and is no longer fit for residential purposes. That was mentioned in the rezone, and she just said it. But anyway, we talked after the meeting and Mr. Purvis even asked my family, why did we need separate houses? Why, did, why couldn't we just live together? And I'm just wondering if he thinks all the area residents just want to live peaceably and not be surrounded by business while he's collecting passive income from this storage facility through the rental, monthly rentals. But like I said, my house is directly across it, so my view is not the greatest either, but if they build that storage facility, it's going to be zero. The, you join this property directly? Yeah, I'm right next to Judy. My, this is the next parcel. Okay. Anyway, but she has her right to sell it to whoever, but we also, the neighbors that are not tired of living here, because I still think it's a great place to be, and it's, right now it's got good scenery, we have the tree canopy providing shades and buffering the noise and clearing the air, filtering the air. And I'm not ready to move from there, but if we keep getting everything rezoned, it's going to make it really not too fun. But county zoning rules and ordinances are in place also to protect adjacent property owners so that we will keep our ability to enjoy our homes and property. Strict application of these ordinances would provide necessary protections for us and the other area residents whose homes would be impacted by this project. The tree buffers would need to be kept at 50 feet as noise buffer and air filter. And as we've said, there already many storage facilities in the area. And it's going, it doesn't really improve anybody's quality of life or including the deer that like to run around and all the other wildlife which is there. And I've seen weekly notices. I've noticed ever since we had that first meeting, I checked the papers. Every week there is notices in there about sales at the storage facilities where people don't pay their rent or whatever on, this, on the units. Every week. And these facilities are known to attract criminal activities. And we are zoned currently for agriculture and suburban area, so please don't transform our neighborhoods to where a place where no one would feel safe and secure to able to enjoy our homes and the scenery away from big cities. And this 24-7 open access thing is a concern for the security, security of it all. Anyway, not every highway intersection should be turned into a business, a retail, or commercial district. But from several pending and recent rezone requests, it's looking like that's what is the ultimate goal for some people. But this rezone, if approved, would create a ripple effect, and more property owners nearby would be also affected for the sake of profits over family. We'd be crowded out. And considering today's home market prices, it's not going to be affordable or practical to have to move. And it's causing stress and undue hardship when people are basically forced to move for the sake of profit. And also, there was a public notice in the Walton Tribune at the end of October where the city of Monroe was going to amend their zoning ordinance, proposed the 14th Amendment to the zoning ordinance regarding many self-storage warehouses in 
to remove to remove them in certain districts and to limit the permitted locations of the mini self storage. <clears throat> so the public was here. The hearing was held in December that day, but they tabled it actually till the meeting this month. They're having that meeting, I think, now or whenever. It was today, I think. So now that the city of Monroe is planning to limit and prohibit the many storage units in, in certain areas and zoning districts, it is equally important, please, to protect our residential neighborhoods and the agricultural districts. And I'm asking on behalf of us now and the future homeowners for the area, please deny this request for the area change, the character area change, and for the rezone request, including all the variances listed in their entirety. But if for some reason you do approve it, I'm hoping that you will please keep all, those, all the rules and regulations in place to where the buffers remain at 50 foot and the building height would be 12 feet instead of 30. And there was something else that was on there, but I can't think of it right this second. Oh, the building was way bigger than it was supposed to be. So all of these, all of these variances that's requested, plus the double in the size of the building, the height and everything, it just proves that that property really is not big enough for this scope of this project they've got going or got planned right now. And plus, when the, when the roundabout goes through, it's not really going to be 3.65 acres that she would even have. It would be less. So it would make it even more of a strain to have all that big just on that property. But like I said, I'm just hoping and praying that you will please deny this request to rezone and the character area change. Thank you for your consideration. Okay. Hang on just a minute in case there's a question. Does anyone from the board like to ask a question? All right. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. Next. Well, she's pulling that up, would you please state your name and where you live? Please in the microphone so we can hear. We live across the street. And I just wanted to, I don't know how many of you have been to that area. Down, I was there today. Down Azura Road, there are beautiful homes. Behind this is a beautiful subdivision. And those people really take care of their homes. Uh, what I can see is once that's built, and these people can't sell their homes. Why would that be? No one. I've got to ask, what, Ms. what, what? Miss Judy said it. No one will want to live there. Oh, her personal home sitting there looking at the gas station. Right. I understand that. They're going to be a two-story building with big lights coming in your windows at night. That subdivision is right behind. You can see all the homes. I can see those turn into cheap rentals, and they will be falling like dominoes, cheap rentals. And I think what you will find is you'll have a crime-ridden <clears throat> area pretty soon. That's all I have to say. All right. Thank you. Okay. Anyone else would like to speak in opposition? Mr. Chairman, I know I heard personally a lot more opposition than than that leading up to this. I just want to make sure everybody has a chance to be heard tonight. That's what I'm, I'm, I'm waiting. Anyone else? I don't know if we have, does anybody here have any stats on storage facilities, Can't hear you crime rate in the area? You gotta talk in the mic, Mark. Does anybody I mean, have any statistics on crime in a storage facility area? We've heard a lot about crime, but uh, I have read reports where the outside facilities sometimes get broken into. 
someone cut a lock and illegally go into it is basically all I've seen. This will be limited access both through gated and the card reader control. Only the clientele that leases will have access. It's my understanding. Your facility up on Claw Brewer, it's already open? It's not open yet. Okay, does anyone else here want to speak in opposition? I think we exhausted that. I have one question. On this presentation that y'all gave us, what is this area with all these trucks, it looks like? Isn't that a landfill there? Hmm. <clears throat> All right, uh, I'm going to go back to the applicant and let them address any of the comments made by the opposition. Yes, sir, thank you. Um, uh, starting with Mr. Alan Harrison, um, uh, appreciate your comments and, and um, you know, sorry about the experience you've had with, with the neighborhood, um, but that type of runoff will not be coming from our property. Uh, we are required, as shown on the site plan, um, to meet the, the current modern day requirements for soil erosion and sedimentation control. And you'll see that we have a detention pond um, on site to accommodate any runoff from the pavement that will be um, on the site. So we'll be held to a much higher standard than those neighborhoods were uh, many, many years ago. And again, as you saw the topography, it's just not likely that water from this site will make its way um, down to Mr. Harrison's um, pond. But I am sorry that he's, he's had to experience um, that. Uh, with regard to Ms. Um, Marie Harrison, as she said, sometimes you have to agree to disagree. Um, you know, in, in this circumstance, this is a tr transitional area. There's, you know, commercial use, there's a Dollar General, there's the gas station, and there's a roundabout coming. And, uh, you know, sometimes change in, in, is, is inevitable. Um, and in this circumstance, you know, my client and Ms. Cook, um, you know, they, they have property rights and, and a right to use their property. and and to sell their property and, um, you know, because of the transition in this area, uh, the only way for her to do that is for it to be a commercial um, use. Um, and so, you know, ordinance <laughs> protect both people and, and both parties. Um, and here again, as I said before, I feel like this commercial use strikes a fair balance. It's not a heavy, intense commercial use. Um, it allows my client to sell her property for commercial uses and move on and it keeps the traffic counts low about 10 cars per day, and it'll be a nice looking facility, uh, again, without a lot of traffic. So I think it strikes a fair balance based on the transition that this, this area is going through. Um, she requested, I guess, that um, you know, no variances be allowed, but in this case, as she mentioned and, and kind of made the case for us, that because GDOT is taking a portion of this property, um, that's what necessitates really having uh, the, the building more condensed and being a two-story building. Um, and that's the, the reason for the variance request there. Um, same with the transitional buffer. Uh, but again, we have agreed to an eight foot fence, barbed wire or not, we're, you know, we're fine either way. If that's what they want, we'll do it. If, if not, uh, we're good. Um, I was just asking. Sure, <laughs> sure. Um, and, and, you know, again, my client um, uh, expressed to me that he would also be willing to, to add vegetation within that buffer or make sure that it um, stays um, as is so that it is a vegetated uh, buffer as well. Um, so we're willing to make some accommodations um, there as well. And again, um, you know, based on my client's experience, he runs the, the self-storage or owns the self-storage facility back behind big lots here in Monroe um, and, you know, no problems uh, whatsoever with safety or security. And again, it's a modern facility, not the, you know, you really, there is no lock to cut um, and there's no vehicles or anything stored outside that make it tempting, um, you know, to, to, to come out and steal something. Um, with regard to Ms. Shelby Harrison's comments um, about fears of the adjoining um, neighborhoods um, turning into um, rental homes and a crime-ridden area, um, I, I really don't think that's a realistic expectation for what would happen with a, a self-storage facility. Again, you know, it's a very low intense commercial use, 10 cars coming and going a day, beautiful brick facade, um, and you know, none of the people in those neighborhoods 
are going to be looking directly at this facility. What will be looking directly at the facility is the gas station um, across the road. And, you know, I, I think, again, you have to balance the property owner's rights here. Um, and again, I think what we've proposed is a low intense use, fits within the transitional commercial um, nature of the area, uh, particularly given the roundabout. Um, so with that, again, we ask for your approval from A1 to B2 uh, with the variance for the height, variance for the transitional buffer, and a change in the character area. I'd be happy to answer any further questions that you have. All right, thank you. Is there any more questions from the board? From planning and zoning site, what are our guidelines for as lighting, and what about the access hours for storage facilities? Yeah, for lighting and also access hours. Okay, now there's not any um, requirements for hours. Okay. But the lighting does have to be downward and inward. So, so it's downward it, lighting? Yes, sir. Okay. Any further questions? Hearing none, everybody said their piece. All right, I'm going to close the public hearing and uh, ask the board to go into further discussion and make a motion one way or the other. Uh, I would like to make a comment. I know of no crime that many warehouses make, especially the indoor control system ones. Um, I have personal experience with many warehouses. I built a complex way back in the day, and the crime we had was uh, people breaking into other people's units uh, at the complex, and that was it. But we had on-site management that lived there. This will not have anyone living there. Uh, so, personally, I don't see any negatives of this development on this lot. Uh, it's going to not put any children in school. It's not going to increase traffic whatsoever. Uh, the traffic count there is huge already. That's why the roundabout's going in. The uh, cost, it's got to be nice. You start spending four and five million dollars and it'll add to the tax base and service people in the community. And it is a changing area. People are flooding over the Gwinnett line. Gwinnett's right there. Uh, so uh, I, I would make a motion to approve it as it's submitted if I can get a second. I second. Okay, we have a second. Now, for the discussion, uh, I'd like to poll the board if they have a negative comment to make about the complex other than just we don't like it. All right, any further discussion? I'm gonna call a vote and see how this one's going to fly. Those in favor, say aye. 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 Uh. Those in opposition? No. Okay, now I gotta poll each individual one because I couldn't count the eyes. All right, uh, I know we had Bradford and Bo Warren Correct. negative. Are there any more negative votes? If not, the motion passes and it's approved as presented. Okay, 4.2. Okay, this next case is um, Z2210004, rezone 2.9 acres from A1 to B1 for a gas station and retail space. The applicant and owner is Georgia Investment Group, LLC. Property is located at 6495 
Highway 20 and Rosebud Road. This is in District 2. Um, this one is similar to the previous one. Um, at the November meeting, there was a presentation. Um, the applicant uh, had a, someone to represent for them and they want to rezone to be one to build a gas station and retail space and have an entrance on Rosebud and Highway 20 if the DOT allowed. They're willing to landscape according to um, the need around the entrance. There were residents there that were um, opposed. Their concerns were traffic, um, health hazard due to fumes from gas and dumpsters. This was tabled for the neighborhood to try to get together. At the um, December meeting, again, the Planning Commission only voted. There was no public hearing. They did that again in there December? Was, this was, yes, at the same meeting. Two, two different cases that were tabled. Um, the Planning Com Commission on this case made a recommendation for approval with the following conditions. Add additional trees in the buffer on the north and west side and the number and species to be, to be determined by the Planning and Development Office. Okay. I'm going to open public hearing on this as the applicant here. Would like to come up and tell us what they're going to do, please. <clears throat> Mr. Chairman, uh, Board of Commissioner, um, thank you for the opportunity to present this case. Uh, my name is Tip Huen. I'm with Alcovi Engineering. Uh, I'm sorry, my client, uh, he, uh, he didn't realize that the, the meeting was held tonight, and so he was unable to make it but he asked me to speak on his behalf. Um, and Ms. Uh, per Ms. Uh, Shauna, uh, the, the case was tabled um, to allow us to reach out to the, uh, to the adjacent uh, folks. And we did uh, have a community part uh, participation me meeting. Uh, we had that at uh, Journey's End, uh, right around the, uh, the Thanksgiving uh, holiday. Uh, there were 18 people there. Uh, we were able to um, convince uh, the, uh, the neighbor adjacent to uh, immediately to the east, uh, uh, and then there were several other that uh, that um, that have no objection to it, but there are several others that uh, agrees to disagree, and we uh, we thank them for it. But uh, uh, the main concern uh, for this project is uh, is that. Uh, there were several people in the neighborhood, uh, two neighborhoods nearby. Uh, They're uh, bringing up that uh, the traffic uh, on Highway 20, people are just going too fast. And then also uh, in the afternoon, there's a sun that, uh, that's getting in the eye uh, of the folks and they can't see and there's a lot of accident in that area. But uh, I've, I've told them that um, uh, that's DOT right away and we don't have any control over it. Uh, what we have control over is uh, uh, is we'll present. Uh, I, I have uh, following the the uh, uh, following the November meeting, uh, I submitted uh, the conceptual plan to DOT and asked them for uh, their uh, opinion. Uh, but uh, I've uh, I've done like two two separate follow up afterward uh, with Mr. Duncan at uh, Georgia DOT. But uh, as of today, I have not heard back. Uh, I'm assuming that uh, without, uh, without uh, design plans, they're not going to review it and they're not going to issue any preliminary uh, uh, comment on it. Uh, and so um, I, I have done that. I've exhausted uh, um, my uh, way of, of knowing whether the, uh, the DOT would be approved. But uh, we have told the, the neighbors that whatever DOT required, that's what we're going to do. Uh, and also, um, the uh, Warren County will have um, control over on the uh, an, an entrance we're proposing uh, on uh, Rosebud Road that would be uh, fairly close to the uh, to the north uh, property uh, line. Uh, and we are we are um, voluntarily uh, we. Uh, plan on to uh, put uh, landscaping, uh, uh, and then we also uh, promise that wherever there's uh, some sparse area uh, along 
uh, that property line that would uh, plant additional supplemented trees uh, to provide screening. Uh, and uh, there was uh, some uh, uh, concern about where the, the dumpster location of, of the proposed plans uh, is, but uh, uh, the dumpster location plans, I'm sorry, the, the plan wasn't uh, um, uploaded here, but uh, uh, it's, it's uh, in, in a position that's, uh, that's, very, uh, that's far away from every, uh, from, uh, all, uh, from all the neighbors. Uh, we're at least uh, um, 150 feet from uh, each side, so uh, the the neighbors uh, to the east, Mr. Uh, Davids. Uh, after I presented that, he's uh, and, and uh, he wanted the, the dumpster to move to, uh, towards the east uh, east side, but the east side would put it uh, too close to uh, the folks to the north uh, uh, to the northwest. So um, he agreed that my proposed location was was the best location. Um, and like I said, we have exhausted. Uh, uh, I mean, we have reached out to people and try to tell them, uh, but there are uh, some of the oppositions uh, mainly is that uh, they don't agree with the, the use and, uh, and they have traffic concern on Highway 20. Um, and so um, uh, the uh, use-wise, uh, the Dollar General is right across uh, the street. Uh, there's a gas station uh, right across the uh, the uh, intersections, uh, that's Jerry uh, there with the restaurant in it, uh, and uh, I'm, um, our, pro uh, our project would probably be uh, in a similar manner to, to that. Okay. And so I'm uh, asking that the board uh, consider approval of the project, and I uh, would entertain any comments that you or question that you might have. Okay. Are there any questions right now? If okay. DOT will, if DOT will grant a curb cut off of 20, you will put an entrance off 20 also. Yes, sir. Uh, we are proposing that uh, one now, but uh, I was unable to get any confirmation from them whether they would allow uh, allow it or not. Uh, but uh, uh, most likely, if uh, um, in my uh, my experience is they, they'll make a requirement if, if we can meet those requirements. If not, they might, uh, they might limit the, uh, the access. They might make it a right in, right out or something. That, uh, so, but, uh, but that would be up to DOT. Would you, con would you continue on with this project if you couldn't come off of 20? Uh, I'll have to check with the with That'd be, owner, that'd be a terrible <laughs> right. way to get out trying to make it. Mark, I can't hear you. I'm sorry. And 5 o'clock in the afternoon, it's terrible. They're on Rosebud. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right. Thank you. Yes, sir. Is there anyone else to here that would like to speak in favor of this? Seeing none, those in opposition. You don't want to speak in favor. You already told me that. All right. <laughs> those in opposition, uh, please come forward and tell us who you are. Show us on the map where your property is in relation to this property. And uh, you, sir, have the podium. First, please tell us your name so all of us know who's speaking. I'm sorry. I hate to, but we like to have it for the record, please. All right, good. Uh, I'm Lee Dennis, um, and I want to thank the chairman and commissioners uh, for the opportunity to come here and, and express my opposition to this. Uh, I'm uh, um, not a resident of the county, but my daughter, and two of my children are a resident of the county, and I'm here to represent my daughter. Okay. Who owns the property adjacent to this. So she and, owns the property that joins this property. Right. And 
I'm a, I'm a, a, but we do everything. My family has always done everything in Walton County. I've been a member of Corinth Christian Church for 40 years. I'm a 60 year Mason, a uh, member of Dawson Lodge. And uh, we do all our shopping here uh, in, in the county at Publix and Kroger and Ingalls and, and all. So, um, and when we eat out, we usually eat out right in Walton County. So we, we've just, you know, I feel like I'm a Walton County person, <laughs> even though my, my- Well, you're speaking for a Walton County person, so yes, uh, thank you. <laughs> And um, my daughter uh, that owns this property adjacent, it works for the Board of Education for Walton County. And uh, my, uh, my son that lives in Walton County, uh, he's got his own business, uh, Mitch Dennis Insurance. And uh, I wanted to give you a little background information. I don't know whether y'all know this or not, but the the, they paid four hundred, a little over four hundred thousand dollars for that piece of property. It had only re, uh, uh, residential. It was no commercial, no service station or anything. Uh, <coughs> and uh, they, uh, and uh, with the intentions of getting all that. And I mean, would you put $400,000 down on a piece of property and not have anything zoned? That's I, not my call. I don't think so. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, uh, the, uh, and, and the guy that uh, did that, he, he is an Indian and I don't mean to be racial or anything at all, but they can borrow our tax money at 2%, and we cannot borrow that tax money. We, well, have, to go to a let's, lending, uh, we let's, have to go to a lending institution at uh, 14 I, I understand, but we're not going down this road uh, well, about uh, race or, right. or borrowing. Uh, let's talk about the project and how it affects your your uh, daughter's property, All right. and uh, she is the next property on, uh, use the pointer and show me her property, please. Well, that, that person that the property, hired the guy, uh, right there is your property. Uh huh. This is my house. Okay. Feet. To the property line. Yes. So the Dollar General across the street does not have an entrance on Highway 20. Okay. All right. <clears throat> And this 
Yeah, I'm having a hard time hearing you. I, I've uh, dove hunted too much, and my hearing, I have to hear it through the microphone, please. I'm going to ask my daughter to come up and read um, uh, the study that we've, we've uh, obtained. Okay. Hey, I'm Cheryl Lanier. Um, me and my husband live right here, right beside the proposed gas station. Um, we have information from the CDC that's saying high levels of benzene at and around the gas stations. According to the, <clears throat> excuse me, got something in my throat. According to the CDC, benzene can cause destruction, <clears throat> destruction of cells, cause cancer, bone marrow, not, <clears throat> not producing enough red blood cells, <clears throat> damage to the immune system causing white blood cells. <clears throat> Gosh, got something in my throat. You want me to read it? Yeah. We'll get you a bottle of water real quick. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, in other words, we have information from CDC saying that there are high levels of benzene at, the, <clears throat> at and around gas stations. According to CDC, benzene can cause destructive <laughs> cells of cells ca uh, causing cancer, bone marrow, and not to produce enough red blood cells uh, to damage the immune system, uh, causing loss of white blood cells, lung dysfunction, and heart defects. The University of Colorado states people living near gas facilities are exposed to hazardous air pollutants, including carcinogenic like benzene that can cause health risk above levels deemed acceptable by the Environmental Protection Agency. They also state the cancer risk of those living within 500 feet is eight times higher than the EPA upper risk threshold. The University of Colorado found in their research that acute hazards uh, such as neuro neurological and hemological development and birth defects in humans and animals can also be caused due to the inhalants of benzene and alkalines by living within 500 feet of a gas facility. Okay. And uh, my daughter has three people living in her home, and they have health problems. And uh, this... Uh, has the uh, applicant made any sort of interest in purchasing your daughter's property or home? Not that I know of. Okay. Uh, I mean, my daughter and her husband have worked hard all their life and bought that five acres in that home, and it's paid for. I, and I they, understand. There's, and a, they there's, a, have to move. there's a lot of us have done that, too. Yeah. Uh, have you got a gas station next to you? Uh, no, sir. Okay. <laughs> uh, mine's down the road from me, so, uh, but I don't have one next door right. to me. And... But, uh, and I, I, do, uh, I beg and urge y'all uh, to vote no on this project uh, to protect the citizens of Walton County, uh, for every, which every one of them voted for y'all in office. And, and they will continue to vote for you, and I thank you for this opportunity. All right, thank you, sir. Is there any questions from the board? All right, is there anyone else here in opposition to this that would like to speak? Uh, please come forward, because now's the time for it. Um, on the original plat, the, um, must be something right here, I'm sorry. <laughs> I have asthma, so it hits me quick. Um, 
on their original plat for the land, it is 2.2 acres, not 2.9. Um, the proposed that the property owner sent to the planning and zoning committee, he listed 2.9. He also showed the land looking different, like as big as my property. My property is five acres. That property there is only 2.2. Okay. Uh, but I did want to point that out. All right. 2.2 acres and three acres are a big, <coughs> big difference. <laughs> All right, thank you. All right, anyone else? All right, I'll give the uh, applicant a chance to address and rebut, and I do have one question right off the bat. I know you've had it surveyed. Uh, you you work with the survey company. Has, what's the acreage surveyed out? Uh, we didn't do the survey for this uh, track, but Adam and Lee uh, has done a, a survey, and they listed at 2.9 acres, sir. 2.9. Yes, sir. Well, looking at just visual view, looking at your track, if it's five, that other track is over two acres. It's it looks to be. But I mean, this is you know I, I'm not going to argue with surveyors or, or the survey. It's the project that right. we're talking about. Um, uh, what about the entrance on 20? Does the applicant have a commitment from DOT? I have not yet, sir. I've uh, I've submitted and I, I've reached out to them. Uh, at least three times, mm -hmm. and I have not gotten an answer from them yet. Uh, okay. On the last, uh, on the last status that I uh, sent out, I copy Miss Tracy Malcolm with uh, with the county on it, so that so that she, she's aware of that. Um, but I have not have any answer from DOT yet. Okay. All right. Uh, any other comments you'd like to make yes, to rebut? Yes, um, In response to the land side, we. Uh, I mean, we have a, 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 a land survey, a survey, this track, and it's listed at 2.9. Uh, as far as uh, the DOT, I have not have confirmations, but uh, on, the, uh, on the entrance on uh, Rosebud Road, we will do exactly what Walton County Planning Department, uh, we will uh, make sure that all the regulations, we follow Walton County uh, guideline uh, on that entrance. Okay, are there any questions from the board, please? Hearing none, I'm going to close the public hearing and uh, ask the board to discuss or make a motion and tell us what you want to do. Mr. Chairman, I'm going to move to accept the recommendation from the Planning and Zoning. Uh, it would be very easy to deny it, but I think it would be a case that we would lose if we went to court because there's already commercial on two other corners. Um, so I make the motion that we approve the recommendation from planning and zoning with the conditions that they have. Any, with the conditions that they recommend? Correct. <clears throat> All right. Uh, is there a second? Well, I'll second it just to call it to a vote from you guys. Uh, all those in favor of approving, say aye. 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 Those opposed? Uh, One. I'm going to choose not to vote this time. I can vote or can't vote. So uh, it's already passed. There's. Oh, I do. Okay. I didn't know that was a rule. Uh, it has passed anyway, so I'll vote no. I can second something and vote no. Uh, I was opposed, sir. Okay, it's three. It's three to four then. Yes, sir. 
All right, it still passes. Huh? Lee, me, and Tim, and the rest of them voted yes. Okay, it's uh, next case, please. Sure, we call a break about five minutes. That would be great. Let's take a five minute break because <coughs> we've been at it an hour and a half. All on zone and Sharna, you saved them up all year long and hit us. Uh, well, those two, those two, we needed to let everybody speak because that damn planning commission yeah, we didn't want to speak. We got to stop that stop shit. That scrimmage. <laughs> <laughs> Places like that where it's changing the commercial. I mean, they've been there forever. I mean, but that store isn't it going on the backside of the Dollar General? It is. I mean, it is. But I mean, I still get it. I mean, they've yeah, still I mean, been living there their whole life. They're not going to be seeing it as much as they are to the gas station. No. Dollar General beats us and gets the store in uh, gratis. I don't think they will. I don't think they will. I don't know. So show me where it's I'm telling you, man. I'll go ahead and leave that right. I hope they don't. Okay. I heard it was. You come into a long one tonight. Hey, I'm good. Yeah, it's been a year. You got a lot of business to handle. Oh, that's a It'll be a long one. You're done. 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 you I thought, if they, I thought if they heard all, and this is just for me, I ain't sure you can double check. Chip would be able to tell you better not to. I thought that if they'd already heard it, heard the case, 
and then for whatever reason they didn't make a decision that they tabled it. Then when it comes back, I mean, courtesy would be that you get tabled it to research something. That's right. Then they should announce what they found. And then you get everybody another go round. Okay. So, there you go. Uh, it's just, and we pay the penalty for it. We we hear. We hear to midnight this, tonight. Yeah. Thank, thankful I got some David Thompson pecans. Still on. I was just a talk. <laughs> Did you hear Kirby Smart talk to the? They took the locker room talk before the game. On the internet. He was business. I can't believe he talks that vulgar. He was, I guess, trying to fire him up. And I think back, we had a coach that would cuss us out. I think he'd had enough game before. Because what he told him after that game. Aren't they good? You can't eat just for it. Yeah, one star down there. I ain't opening mine yet. Oh, I'm about to take yours home with me, boy. And you shut up and leave him right there. Them are good. Is everybody back? Where's Bo? <sighs> He's out there. There he is. I'm glad mine's a withdrawal. Okay, everyone. Could we uh, please settle down? And because uh, we still got a long agenda tonight. All right, item number three. Um, Charna, please. Yes, sir. This this has been withdrawn. It was a conditional use, CU 22110002, for an event facility um, that was on Nunley Farm Road. And uh, our ordinance requires that these type of facilities be located on a collector. And so they turned it in, and then they decided prior to it even going to the Planning Commission to withdraw it. So it is withdrawn. So okay, so the, do I still open a public hearing on a withdrawal? It didn't even go to planning, and that's a different situation. A lot of times when we've had it advertised and we let people go ahead and speak if, if they're here. And they, yeah, but, and it didn't. They so had, we just accept the withdrawal? Yes, sir. Entertain a motion to accept this withdrawal. So moved. Need a second, please. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. All right, item 4-4. Four, four. Approval with condition Z22100024, rezone 3.551 acres from A2 to B3 to allow a retail establishment. Applicant is Split Silk Properties, LLC. Owner is Lincia McCurdy. Properties located on Highway 78 in District 1. Um, Jeff Timler with Split Silk Properties represented this for the owner. The owner has a retail establishment in the county now, and she would like to purchase this property and um, move her business here. She buys items from Big Box Returns and resells them. She has four employees, and um, there will not be a lot of traffic, and um, there was no opposition. The Planning Commission recommended that instead of a B3, that this, because they originally approved, applied for B3, that this be approved to B2, which also allows this use, that the applicant look at shifting their building to the west and remove parking on the east so that they can maintain that 20 foot buffer. Okay. Because they did ask for a variance on that buffer. All right. Is the applicant here? Please come forward and tell us. Good evening, Chairman, Board of Commissioners. Uh, Jeff Timler, Split Silk Properties, P.O. Box 1725, Loganville, uh, representing Lincia McCurdy, uh, who is actually the owner. She's already uh, purchased this property. And as you know, it's uh, currently zoned uh, for mobile homes. Um, and we're asking, we were asking B3. We were, um, we uh, applied an error, and, and B2 is perfectly fine for her use. Um, and we also originally 
uh, submitted as a 40,000 square foot building, but uh, we're going to drop that down to 20,000 square feet. So we, we really don't need that extra parking that the uh, Planning Commission uh, spoke of. However, um, we would like to ask for, for deletion of both three and four of those conditions because the adjoining property, as you know, is, is uh, zoned agricultural. It's uh, all in floodplain and um, the buffer floodplain. You've already got water quality and water quantity in your retention pond anyway, so it's really, I don't know what the um, intent is in buffering that area. Um, if it was developed, it'd probably be developed commercial anyway um, because of the frontage on Sydney Highway, but obviously it's not developable because it's floodplain. Um, so that, we're okay with conditions one and two. We we're, again agree with B2, and uh, we'll, we try, we'll try to ship, shift the building west if we can a little bit. Um, it won't generate a lot of traffic, as uh, Ms. Parker stated, that uh, <coughs> we have four, she'll have four employees. Um, it's, a, it's a really good business. She's been in operation since 2018. Um, it fits the Walton County's comprehensive plan um, uses, and uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions. and. There are none. I'd like to reserve the remaining balance of my time. Uh, there was no opposition during the planning commission. Okay. Are there any questions right now from the board? Yes, sir. Can't hear you now, Hermes. You You're gonna have to use the mic. We can't hear you now. Well, I bet if I turn it on, it'd help too. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> You're next to Flat Creek. What are you planning on doing to protect that water? Well, um, like most, all the developments in Gwinnett County, or excuse me, Walton County, um, the, I believe your county regulations have water quality and water quantity protection for the retention ponds. So it will be, it will be screened and both quantity and quality before it leaves the site. Yes, sir. EPA don't require anything extra being that close to that? No, it'll just be the state recovery. Okay. All right, any other questions? Sean, what is the standard buffer there? What would be the standard buffer to be around there? If there were, um, if there were state waters on the property, then um, the 75 foot. Impervious. It's not even in the floodplain. Okay. All right. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. We'll we'll call you back if there's opposition. All right. Is anyone else here in favor of this that would like to speak? Okay. Is there anyone here in opposition to this rezone that would like to come forward and speak? Seeing none, yes. then uh, you don't have anything to come back and rebut. Are there any more questions of the applicant? If not, I'll close the public hearing and ask the boards for their. Mr. Chairman, I make the motion that we approve. We have a motion to approve. Second. We have a second. Any further discussion? Can I clarify those? Are there conditions? With approved with the conditions as listed. And, and with three and four, the ones that he's asked to be removed, or keeping the three and four, or are you removing three and four based on? That? We're keeping three and four. And this is a B2? It's going to be B2 instead of B3? No, this says go on to B3. But the conditions say B2. Explain that for us, sir. Oh. The comments, I see that. Thing. Yes, sir. It was just this what he's asking for is allowed in the beginning. That's your motion, and that's a second. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I've got the wrong one. <laughs> we got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimous. Okay, plan and development. We have acceptance of right of way. And these are subdivisions, so this is acceptance for the record <clears throat> on all, all three of these. Uh, Joel's Landing, the Fields at Alcove Mountain Phase 2, and Red Oak Ridge Phase 1. Okay, entertain. Any questions from the board? I'm sorry. Entertain a motion. Motion to approve. I'll second. All three? All three. 
Motion to approve all three. We a have second. a second. Any second further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimous. Now my favorite part of the meeting. Our audit has been completed and we have Maudlin and Jenkins here to present the 2022 audit and I may ask some questions, but I definitely have some comments to make afterwards. It, it's a good, good evening. It's a pleasure to introduce Ryan Jones. Y'all met him last year. Uh, he's an Albuquerque uh, native, uh, went to University of New Mexico. He's a CPA, a senior director with Malden and Jenkins, which has done our audit for decades. Um, he is, when we find out, we, we, we typically find out in uh, August who our director is going to be. Uh, to, I, I mean, I'm being honest. To hear that he's going to be our director is a uh, get up and clap. Uh, he's, he's attentive. He, he's a good listener. He's very intelligent, um, thorough. Uh, he's just a good man. And uh, I just want to introduce Ryan. Ryan's going to present the statement. And uh, thank you. Thanks, Milton. Yes, sir. Well, I'm going to have to tell my wife that Milton said I'm a good listener because she she doesn't think so. Uh, it's it's great to be back with you all again, uh, Ryan Jones. Um, so this is my third year working on the county's audit. This was the very first audit that I worked on when I moved to Georgia about uh, two and a half years ago. So happy to be back. And on behalf of Malden and Jenkins, thanks for um, giving us the opportunity to serve you. So let's see if I can not mess this up. So this is our um, audit presentation, uh, presentation of audit results. We did finalize the audit back in December, um, got that submitted to the state and also submitted to GFOA so that you all can get your uh, GFOA certificate of excellence. Uh, just a little bit about Malden and Jenkins. Uh, we're, uh, we have offices in five states. Uh, 13 offices in five states, and we serve about 650 government clients. Uh, personally, I, I probably serve about 20. Um, this is one of two counties that I, that I have, and I always enjoy working with uh, Walton County. So again, thank you. So you all hire us to uh, look at your numbers, uh, look at your financial statements, issue an audit opinion over those statements. Uh, we do conduct our audit in accordance with professional standards, so that's generally accepted auditing standards and government auditing standards. Uh, we do not give an, an opinion on internal control, uh, but we do consider internal control as part of designing the procedures um, to carry out the audit. And of course, we report to you all <clears throat> any, any sorts of deficiencies or problems that we come across in internal control. Um, I'm happy to report that uh, for the fiscal year 2022 audit, uh, we were able to give you all a clean opinion. It's an unmodified opinion. It's really the highest level of assurance that an independent CPA firm can, can give on a set of financial statements, so, so congratulations. And, and really that just means that uh, the numbers are, are fairly stated in all material respects uh, based on the results of our testing. Uh, your significant accounting policies, if you all have a copy of the financial statements, uh, note one uh, comprises, I think, 10 or 12 pages. Those are all your significant accounting policies that uh, we feel a, a reader should be able to look at to uh, gain an understanding of how uh, what the county's processes are to arrive at those numbers. And uh, we're, we're comfortable with the disclosures. There's, you all aren't involved in anything too complex that would be uh, confusing that we would need to talk about in this setting. It's all, uh, it's all pretty standard. It is important to note that uh, there are some significant estimates that are inherent in your financial statements. Really, the, uh, the biggest one is going to be your uh, depreciation of capital assets, uh, you know, how long you think a capital asset is going to last. And then also for certain receivables, uh, there is an estimate in there as to how much of that will actually be collected. And new this, this year, with the implementation of GASB 87, that's the new lease standard, um, there, are, there are estimates involved in determining whether a lease meets the criteria for GASB 87, uh, what that term is and what the disc discount rate would be to, to apply to that balance. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and skip down here to our relationship with management. Um, Milton's been great. His whole team is great. Um, you know, when we when we ask him questions, he's he's open and honest. We didn't have any sort of disagreements uh, with Milton or anybody else um, at the county. Um, audit adjustments. <clears throat> all of the. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. Uh, there were no past audit adjustments, meaning that we didn't come across any any differences and in, um, imbalances that that were not ultimately reflected in your financial statements. And at the end of our audit, we do request a representation letter from management, uh, basically just just stating that um, not, no sort of information was withheld from us that. Um, you know, there was cooperation across the board and that we, we received all the information that, that we would need to complete our audit. Uh, to, our, to, our, to my knowledge, there's no consultation with other accountants and uh, significant issues discussed with management. Um, Milton was really good and the finance team was really good about getting ahead of the new lease standard, which was implemented this year. Um, I had some other clients where it was uh, it was rough, but Milton knew that it, it was it was coming up, and he did his his diligence to uh, to get all of that out of the way before we began the audit. And um, independence, we we are independent um, accountants giving an opinion, so we do consider whether there's any conflicts of interest. Uh, we do the, our firm does some advisory work for you all, but um, that type of advisory work actually doesn't impair our independence and our ability to issue uh, an opinion on your statements. So just very briefly, uh, talking about your general funds, this is the primary operating fund of, of the county. Um, if you look at the, the balance sheet in your financial statements, you'll see that's the very first fund to the left. Uh, general fund revenue sources in 2022, and this is consistent with prior years, um, and as you would expect, tax, tax revenue is about 85% of all of the general fund revenue. And that's followed uh, a close, not even a close second, uh, charges for services, that's at 8%. And you have a, a variety of different types of revenue sources that are coming into that general fund. Uh, I do want to point out the intergovernmental, so this, this can reflect state and federal funding. Uh, your federal funding during fiscal year 22 was about a million dollars, and um, that is a lot lower than what we see with a lot of other counties in Georgia. So uh, you're, you're able to cover the, the needs of the county for the most part with, uh, with your tax revenue and, and state revenue. General fund expenditures by function. Uh, general government, this is your administrative costs, uh, repairs and maintenance uh, that are not associated with, with public safety, um, you know, public works, anything like that. That's, uh, that was sitting at 20%. And uh, your public safety expenditures actually are uh, the largest component of your general fund expenditures sitting at, at 40%. This kind of gives you an idea of what the what the difference is between uh, revenues recognized over the past five years and expenditures incurred. So you can see fluctuated a little bit in 2018 and 2019, but really beginning in 2020 <clears throat> is where you see the revenues being much higher than expenditures. So what that's done is given you all a, a really healthy fund balance in that in that general fund to uh, for you all to determine how best to spend, how to meet the the needs of the the citizens of the of the county. Um, so as I mentioned at the outset, it is our responsibility to communicate any matters that come to our attention uh, during the audit that, that rise to a certain level that we believe need to be commun communicated to the board. Um, so the, the formal finding that we identified this year uh, it was related to the development authority, which <clears throat> is a, it's considered a component unit of the county. So <clears throat> you'll see the development authority's um, financial statements essentially um, included in the county's financial statements. And uh, this was an issue where uh, there was some property that was, that was sold but was uh, left on the books. And so what, what our responsibility is is to look, to, to look at a situation with, with numbers and, and try to determine if we had not been involved and somebody had to rely on that information, would that information be accurate? And so in this case, uh, there was an overstatement of, <clears throat> of assets. I think it was, a, it was land balance. 
um, of approximately $250,000 that uh, really should have been reflected as a, a receivable from a third party. And uh, further, there was $875,000 of um, expenses that were recorded that really were purchases of, of capital assets, which under generally accepted accounting principles, you would, um, you, you would increase the asset balance and not, not recognize an expense. And so uh, those are the two errors that we wanted to, to point out to you regarding the development authority. And a couple of other smaller matters. These are what we call management points. They're not, they're not in the formal uh, financial statement, so um, you know the public doesn't have access to this. Uh, we, <clears throat> as part of our procedures, we test uh, P cards, uh, county credit cards, and there was one instance where a uh, purchasing manager approved uh, his own purchase requisition, and. Um, what, what you really want to strive for is to have segregation of duties where there's not any one person uh, initiating and approving any sort of transaction like that. Uh, we, we didn't find any impropriety with the transaction itself. It's just, it's just the, the process and the control of documenting that there was a separate approval, separate set of eyes um, was, was not present. And the clerk of superior court, this is a custodial fund, uh, so there is a statement of fiduciary net position in the financial statements that lists all the custodial funds. Um, the clerk of superior court, there were, there were two areas, general and fines accounts had unidentified liabilities of approximately 19865 which, you know, in the, in the scope of what, what comes through the county, it's, it's not very much, but we did want to point that out. Uh, a custodial fund by nature is one that takes in money that is ultimately going to somebody else. So it's important to know who, who that money uh, will eventually belong to and have that recorded as such. And we have some new accounting pronouncements coming up in future years. Um, Milton and I will, will work together on that for the upcoming year. Uh, some changes to conduit debt, obligation reporting, and uh, accounting. Uh, probably the biggest one that will impact the county is the second one here, is GASB uh, statement number 96, and this is for subscription-based information technology arrangements, or SABITAs for short, and essentially it's the least standard, uh, but for intangible software subscriptions. So uh, that will be required to be implemented uh, this year, fiscal 23, so it's possible that you all end up with some additional um, assets in the financial statements that were not there previously. And some other information in here. You all should have a copy of this. Um, you know, we offer some free CPE. Uh, we do I IT and security studies. Uh, if anybody's interested, has, has any sort of concerns about that, we have a, we have a great team at the firm who um, does a lot of work with governments in, in Georgia and across the southeast. Um, Looking for, looking for vulnerabilities in the uh, in, in the cyber arena and, and offering suggestions for improvement on that. So, Chairman, I know you said you had some questions. Okay, uh, are there any questions of our accountant? Um, we appreciate you coming. I have a few comments to make on our budget. I'm kind of proud of the audit and. Uh, before I ran for office, I went back seven years on Walton County's audits and went through them. So I'm real, real familiar with where we've been and where we're at. But for my comments, I'll just go back two years. In 2020, the audit showed the county net position at $248 million. Today, our net position is 311, almost 312. That's up $62.9 million, the county's net position. Uh, the 2020, 2022 numbers on page five of this particular audit. It's, it's, if you don't read anything, read the financial highlights of the audit. Um, in 2020, the government's net position only increased 1.8 million over 2019. This audit shows that our government net position increased over last year by 30.7 million. Uh, combined expenditures increased in 20, 
20 by 14.1 million. Last year, our combined expenditures only increased to 8.1 million. Most of that was pay raises. Uh, general fund balance in 2020 was 27.5 million. It was 60% of the general fund budget. Today, our general fund balance is 48.6 million. That's 85.8% .8 of our general fund balance. Uh, we also got our bond rating increased last year. Moody's went from a AA2 to a AA1, Standard & Poor's AA- minus to AA. And the big item in every budget, certain dollars are restricted and they gotta be spent on, on particular items. In 2020, Walton County's restricted dollar amount was 42.2 million. Today, in this last budget, is 63.1 million. But the big number is unrestricted, which is money that we can dedicate to certain projects for the citizens. And in 2020, it was 35.1 million unrestricted. <clears throat> This past audit, we're up to 85.3 million unrestricted funds. And that's a huge step in two years, gentlemen. Property taxes as a percent of the county's total revenue in 2020 went up 8.1%. Property taxes in this budget as a percent of the county's total revenue went down 7.8%. So we are protecting the property tax owners through attrition in our budgets and the increase in other tax revenue. And the last little comment I'll make, we only paved in 2020 15.6 miles of roads. Last year, we paved 23.5 miles of road. That is a 50% increase in two years of paving the county roads. So all that's in this good book. I know how to read it. I'm a few chairmen that do. But uh, anyway, I want to make those comments for the board. Are there any other questions of the audit? Entertain a motion to approve the audit. So moved. I have a motion. Second. We have a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you very much. All right, we have a request from Judge Ott to fund an associate judge position for probate court retroactive back to 11 10 2022. Uh, it appears what happened was that the state was funding this position and somehow it didn't get it reapplied for. So he's asking us to take this over until they can, uh, applications open up again. And uh, I don't have dollar amount. Milton, do you know what the dollar amount is of this uh, position that Judge Ott? It was 10, it looked like around 10, about 10,000, okay. Entertain a motion. I, I don't think anyone would have anybody opposed. I'll make a motion. Thank you. Second. I don't want to tell the judge no. All right. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimous. Okay. Appointments of county clerk, county assistant clerk, county attorney, and vice chairman, entertain a motion for county clerk. Make a motion to approve Rhonda Hawk as county clerk. All right, we have a motion. <clears throat> second. We have a second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimous. Assistant county clerk. Make a motion to appoint Patrice Broughton. We have a motion for Patrice Broughton. A second. Second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion, I mean for county attorney. I'll make a motion to approve uh, present <clears throat> county attorney to continue his job. Second. We have a second. What about Chris? Can Chris help him from time to time? 
He, he's, he's, he's allowed to call all the help he needs at times. All right, we have a motion second. Any f further? Oh, and same contract, too. Uh, he's nice enough not to go up on us. All right, uh, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimous. Vice Chairman of the Board. Make a uh -huh. motion to reappoint Timmy Shellnut. We have a motion to reappoint Timmy Shellnut. Second. We have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Tim, you got elected again. <laughs> All right, administrative consent agenda. Any questions, any uh, <coughs> comments? Make a motion to approve. We have a motion to approve. I'll second the motion. Well, we got two seconds. Any further discussion? All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, passes unanimous. Resolutions, we have uh, setting times and dates and location of regular monthly meeting of the Board of Commissioners for 2023. You have that listing. We need a motion to approve that. Motion to approve. Got a motion to approve. Second. We got a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Passes unanimous. <clears throat> Resolution, fiscal year 23 budget amendments. Gentlemen, you know we do this every three months now instead of every month like we, like we used to. Um, so there's plenty. As you can see, you should have the summary. Uh, there's 10 budget amendments. Seven of the 10 are due to inflation, uh, price increases. Um, as you can see, most of them are SPLOS related. Uh, one of the 10 is uh, asking uh, for a, uh, a change due to lack of availability for Ford, Ford pickups. Uh, one of them is uh, some cameras that were, was previously approved at another meeting. And then uh, the, the last is a just simply a donation to the Sheriff's Department. Um, do you have any questions to ask? I'd be happy to, to try and answer them. Okay, if there's no questions, I entertain a motion to approve the budget amendments. I make a motion to approve. Yeah, a motion to approve. I'll second. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimous. Uh, human resources, we have a personnel advisory board that, uh, and I think the recommendation is no changes, keep the present board, uh, which is Mickey Lane for what? Name the names, Donna, if you got them. I mean, Rhonda. Uh, Mickey Langford, Jacqueline McClendon, Charles Doug Hawkins. Okay. <clears throat> Does anyone uh, have an objection to keeping that same board? I'd like a motion to approve. We got a motion to approve. Second. Second. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimous. Contracts. Uh, the city of Monroe has given us a new contract for waste disposal and gone up uh, like everybody else. Things are going up. Uh, need a motion to approve. This is where we dump uh, from our recycling center the stuff that we can't recycle. Motion to approve. A uh, motion to approve. Second. They're included in this. It was subject to the county attorney's final approval. Okay. We'll correct that. All right. Now we call a vote for it. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Mr. Chairman, I do have one thing I want to add to that. Um, with that increase, it's nearly a $20 a ton increase. Um, I'll be working with John to uh, evaluate that, and I do anticipate that we'll need to bring back some fee changes 
for the board to consider at the next meeting. We didn't want to uh, be presumptive and bring those forward until we found out if you were going to approve this or not. But I do believe next month we will evaluate that and look at cost at um, our facility as well as potentially even <coughs> green bad program for uh, raising additional revenue to offset the additional cost that be okay. by the city of Monroe. And we'll look at that next month. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, we have a proposal. Morris has to trade with uh, testing companies to test our drinking water quality on a regular basis. Uh, he'll tell us about it. Actually, what this is for, every five years under the Clean Water Act, EPA sets out unregulated contaminants to be tested. Uh, and so we just finished up with UCMR4, and uh, this is for testing on UCMR5, and you have to use EPA-approved labs. There's just a few of those throughout the country. So that's what this, and this will happen over the next two to three years, so it won't all be paid at one time. Oh, okay. All right, entertain a motion, or you got any questions of Morris first, I guess would be proper. Motion to approve. You got a motion to approve. Second. Second. All <laughs> those in favor? <coughs> Aye. 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 Those opposed? Passes unanimous. Under discussion before the county manager's report, I added an item, John, before you got in here. Uh, we've been looking at our public parks, especially the larger parks where the ball games and stuff on security cameras and monitoring cameras. And uh, I'd like the board's approval. First take Falker Park where we have the most uh, graffiti and uh, problems and bid out and uh, been working with the sheriff's department to um, <sighs> update these parks with uh, security cameras and it may not stop crime but it will help us catch those that commit them and uh, if the board would uh, give John and I that lead way to do Felker I'd appreciate it. Is this going to be Let's part of like the other camera system that we implemented earlier is it, in addition to it? It will be a uh, camera system similar to that, but it will not be part of it. The flock cameras are tied directly into all the law enforcement around. If they're looking for a particular tag or make a car, that's a different system. This will be uploaded to the cloud. It'll record activities in the parks. So if something happens, you can go back, pull up, and see what happened. We had at Meridian or in Loganville Park during a softball game, I think it was, two parents got in an argument and all of a sudden guns were drawn. And it was he said, she said, and we didn't have camera. And we're getting so populated and so much activity and parks do draw predators and all sorts of uh, non-desirables. I want to look at we're building these funds up for the citizens, and this helps protect <clears throat> kids at ball games and everything. And I want to see how it works at Felker first. <clears throat> um, the whole park system, all five of them now, it would be about a million two. And I don't want to do that yet. I want to take one and bid it out and see how we like it, see how the Sheriff's Department likes it before we look at doing all the parks. Um, it's supposed to be state-of-the-art technology and uh, should be able to zoom in and get any features of anyone doing anything and it'll cover the park in its entirety. They promise no blind spots, so. I make a motion to move forward with the bidding process of the cameras in Felker Park. Second. I had a question for you to move forward. All right. Your, your recommendation for Felker Park, that's based upon stats or based upon a feeling, or what's that based upon? It's based on facts. Uh, I don't see Jody here <coughs> tonight, but uh, 
we've had the equipment shed broken into, we've had graffiti, we've had the back fence cut in multiple places. Hank can, Hank can, Hank can attest to. I don't, I don't have numbers, but I know that that park's been broken to, into more than any of the other ones. I, I, I could pull the police reports, but. They've had vehicles, had the windows busted out of them back in the back. Yeah, like we, it, it's the only that. park that we have that has, we, we built bars out of bar steel and put those over the doors to keep them from kicking them in. Most of the time it's just vandalism. They just kick the doors in and My, for apparent reason. I'm not, I'm not picking on Felker because of its location. It's the first one. I plan to do all of our parks. Uh, it's it's time that we monitor our government areas for the safety of the citizens. And uh, Felker come up because I get more reports of activity of stuff we have to fix down there than any other part. And that I'd was. I'd be happy for Meridian to be a pilot. Huh? I'd be happy for Meridian to be a pilot. Well, I'll take cameras in a heartbeat up here. I'd like to reform my motion to make it South Walton Park. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, we need to try it out, but I would like to do Felker first. And if it works the way they tell us it will, I'll be coming back for the rest of the parks. The Walnut Grove Park that we're working on designing has all this technology in it if we uh, ever, ever get that one off the ground. But our other parks don't, and there are requests for LED lighting. There's requests for all sorts of upgrades, but safety needs to be the first criteria. And according to Sheriff's Department, these are invaluable tools these days to help deter uh, crime. So. Is your motion still Felker or are you changing the side? I'm, I'm going to stick with Felker. All That's right. what you want to do. We have a motion with Felker. I need a second. 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 Any further discussion? I, we do have one bid now, but if I disclose that right now, that'll set the bar and it, we may get lower bids. So uh, <clears throat> it'll be what it'll be. So, all right, I'll call the vote. All those in favor say aye. Uh, Oppose? Thank you all. All right, county managers, you still got enough energy to give us a report? I'm trying. I've been going since about 3.30 this morning, I think. Um, but uh, I, just a few brief things I wanted to cover with you. Um, we currently have 843 total active employees with 127 vacant positions. And I wanted to be a little bit more specific about that because we had some questions when we had our uh, pay raise discussion about low level positions being open. And, and I looked into that even further with HR and with the department directors, and that's because we, we're moving those people who are in the lower level positions, once they're identified as being capable, and bumping them up into higher level, more supervisory positions based on their experience and skills and knowledge and abilities. So it leaves those lower level positions open and we're actively recruiting and uh, looking at new ways to recruit for uh, some of those. Um, two, some good news on your prescription cost uh, changes that you made earlier. In 2021, at this time, we had spent $743,290. As of the same comparable date in 2022, we're down to 458,781,000. So that was a good move as we move forward with that. Currently in water, um, we were averaging during the winter months about 70% usage. Um, during uh, the cold weather event, that increased to around 80%. A lot of it was because of people leaving their water dripping and uh, also some water, uh, water line breaks. Um, but it just further highlights the need for our movement towards Hard Labor Creek uh, Reservoir and the availability that we have there. Um, number four is the convenience station at Good Hope behind the fire station. Um, we're moving forward with closing that convenience station during the construction. We'll be um, breaking ground on the uh, fire station there. And the reason that we need to close that 
is because the convenience stations around back and it would actually in, uh, encourage citizens to drive through a construction area and that's just not going to be safe um, or convenient for the construction crews so we're going to close that reevaluate it in the future but what we have done is we're extending some hours and uh, placing those staff at other convenience locations to uh, help enhance those uh, finally, I, uh, I do need to uh, get a little bit of a direction. In March of 22, the board approved a uh, COVID admin leave where that the county would pay for some days and employees would pay for some days. And um, just looking through GLGA and working with HR, we're finding that the majority of cities and counties around us have started to rescind those and pull those back as we return to more normal operations. Uh, and um, we, they are ending those in January, and both HR and myself are recommending that we follow suit and also end that temporary policy so that we just fall back to our regular allotment of sick time. Effective, uh, effective when? We're, I would say that as we move forward, we can either do it effective immediately or do it effective February 1st. Yeah, because I've signed some COVID waivers today. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it's not an acknowledgement that it's gone. It's just a decrease in the number of active cases and... Um, there's and not that many city. now every week, but there's one or two come along. What do we do when, like, we can sort of show that it was definitely, like, on-the-job contact? Yeah. Melissa, you want to help me out with that one? And, and Melissa, do you have any... Uh, concerns about using a February 1st effective date? No, sir, that's fine. February 1st is fine. That way it will give us plenty of time to notify the employees and the departments. That way everybody's kind of aware. Most of the COVID leave that we've gotten recently um, actually dated back from around the holidays, November and December. Uh, we haven't received any that were actually positive for January as of yet. But. Um, Lee had a question. Uh, okay. What are we, uh, like, for those things that we know that, like, there's a 90% probability it happened on the job, let's just say with fire, EMS, the sheriff's office, like, they go in contact, the call actually comes out, hey, they're going out there dealing with a COVID positive. It's because that's really what happens, you know, a lot of times it'll show that, hey, they're COVID positive or not, and sometimes it doesn't. I guess is there, like, workers' comp? opportunities for stuff like that? Right, I actually researched that. That's a very good question. Um, ACCG um, denies that as workers' comp. <clears throat> Though what, I, I get that, but like, does that mean that we're held to denying that as far as workers' comp or that covering those people because like we're sending them in there? Right, yep. yes sir. Um, human resources does, People. HR, we don't make the determination whether a workers' comp claim is approved or denied. We actually submit it, and ACCG makes that determination. Um, however, as far as the COVID pay, if we stop it, I think it needs to be stopped across the board instead of, you know, um, saying, you know. Well, we've been running it most of the time since I've been here. Right. Right. Uh, and, most and it does need to have a stopping point. Yes, sir. Most of the employees that are, are getting approved now actually have sick leave that, you know, is available. We're not running into a lot of cases that someone has exhausted all of their leave. And we can always revisit it if we have another outbreak here. Okay. Are you uh, asking us to make a, does one of us need to make that a motion? I, I would. It was voted they, on. They're requesting it. Let's, yeah. let's vote on it to end it a certain time. February 1st suits me. I make a motion that we end it February 1st. All right, we have a motion to end it February 1st. Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Passes unanimous. And just to uh, Final comment, I just wanted to thank all the employees from taking care of the streets to fixing water lines to making sure buildings that were built in 1883, uh, the pipes didn't freeze during our last winter spell because we had quite a few who worked um, through the holidays to make sure that that happened. And we even assisted other communities like Social Circle 
um, when they lost a major portion of their water pressure due to water line breaks. So um, just wanted to thank everybody. Very good job. Our crews did an outstanding that, job. That concludes everything I have, sir. All right, public comment. We have a uh, public comment tonight. I'm sorry to make you wait so long. Generally, we're in and out in an hour, I swear, but tonight is not that night, so. Thank you. Um, I won't keep you all too long, um, but I appreciate the opportunity to share with you all. Um, so my name is Stephanie Calabrese. Um, I'm a documentary artist and I've lived in Monroe and Walton County for the past 26 years. I'm here to offer an invitation to help support racial reconciliation with an aim toward healing here in Monroe and our greater Walton County community. First, some background. In 2017, I had shared a documentary photography exhibit titled Hometown, a documentary of Monroe, Georgia at the Walton Center for the Arts. The New York Times featured a collection of images from the exhibit and a story on their website. And when the journalist um, interviewed me, one of the questions she asked was, does Monroe feel segregated to you? And I didn't want to answer that question. I knew in my heart the answer was yes, but I felt too ashamed on behalf of our community to admit it. Like most of you, I love this town, our county, and I most often choose to focus on our positive attributes. As a documentarian, I struggle with the decision to remain silent on that question. What was I trying to hide? It took another year to build up enough courage to really dig in and attempt to understand the roots of the unspoken racial divide in our community. In 2018, I began a journey that included extensive research. I conducted 40 interviews, mostly with fellow Monroe residents, black and white, Walton County residents too, in their homes and in mine about their memories and experiences in our town. It was an enlightening and very moving experience. To wholeheartedly understand and love a person or a community, I believe we have to acknowledge and accept the good and the bad with open hearts and minds. The results of this research I share in a documentary feature film titled Unspoken. The film offers an honest portrait of our town and parts of our county um, and an intimate look at the impact of the 1946 Morris Ford lynching, segregation and integration through today in our community. As a leader in our community, I believe this film will help you better understand our local history and its influence on present day challenges. I hope it might offer clues on ways we can come together to help solve them. Unspoken received the Audience Choice Award for Documentary Feature at the Macon Film Festival, a special jury award at the Rome International Film Festival, it's been an official selection at the Morehouse College Human Rights Film Festival, the Chagrin Documentary Film Festival, the Portland Film Festival, and will soon screen at Cinema on the Bayou Festival later this month. But I'm most looking forward to screening it here in Walton County on Saturday, February 11th at 7.30 p.m. and Sunday, February 12th at 1.30 p.m. at Onstage Community Theater here in Monroe. And I sincerely hope you'll join us. Following the screenings of the film here in Monroe, we'll host a community dialogue inspired by Unspoken for Walton County residents. It will be held on Saturday, February 25th from 10 a.m. until 1 p.m. at Grace Monroe Student Auditorium and led by Haley Smith, the Director of Diversity and Inclusion for Barry College. It's a great opportunity for us to come together face to face, diversify our circle of friends and neighbors, share personal stories, and exchange perspectives inspired by the film with an aim toward racial, racial reconciliation and healing here in our community. Thank you so much for the opportunity to share, and I sincerely hope you'll join us for these events. Okay, thank you. Uh, everyone has the dates, I hope. If not, we will make sure you have these and uh it'll be right down here at the on stage here in monroe yes okay all right thank you very much thank you is that the only public comment we have okay do we have need for executive session i think then we can entertain a motion to adjourn so moved
<laughs> I, I was wondering who'd get that first. <laughs> All right, we got to have a second. You can't leave yet. Somebody give me a second. Second. All right, there Four. we go. Second. Four. All in favor say aye. aye. Thank you all. Aye. Thank you. Shane and them at the development authorities.